Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You are watching South Asia Newsline and have the top stories we are tracking for you on Tuesday, the 23rd of January. Amid India Maldives dispute, Chinese research vessels head towards Mali. Canada announces two year cap on foreign student visas, move to impact Indian students. And activist warns will form POK government in exile if demands not met. And now for all the details. Amid strained ties with New Delhi, a Chinese research vessel similar to the type against which India had previously expressed objections due to its operations near Sri Lanka is expected to reach Maldives within a couple of weeks, reports have suggested. China has the largest fleet of research vessels in the region, which experts believe serve both scientific and military purposes. Researcher Damien Semin, in a post on X, informed that Chinese research vessel Jiang Yanghong 3 is entering the Indian Ocean region, displaying its destination as Mali. There is no official confirmation whether India has expressed objections with the Maldives, but New Delhi has previously done so when Chinese research vessels had visited neighbouring Sri Lanka. The Indian Navy is monitoring the activity of the ship, report said. Moving on, Canada has announced that it is imposing an immediate two-year cap on international student visas to curb the impact of housing crisis and target institutional bad actors. The Justin Trudeau government has said it will approve 3,60,000 study permits, a dip by 35% from 2023. The new proposals will also set limits on postgraduate work permits issued to foreign students, which will likely encourage them to return to their home countries. The development will have a big impact on Indian students, which constitute the largest group of students in Canada. Notably, the number of study permits Canada issued to Indian students has already fell sharply since last year after the diplomatic spat between New Delhi and Ottawa. Canadian Immigration Minister Mark Miller has hinted the number of study permits to Indians is unlikely to rebound soon. And thousands of Hindu devotees on Tuesday thronged the newly inaugurated Ram Temple in India's Ayodhya city as it opened for the first time for public viewing. Devotees started gathering outside the doors of the Grand Temple in biting cold since early hours to offer prayers to deity on the first morning after the consecration ceremony. Devotees believe the temple site is the birthplace of Lord Ram, which was holy to them long before the Mughals raised a temple at the spot to build the Babri Masjid or mosque in 1528. बहुत दिव्य हम लोगों को ऐसी कभी अनुभूति नहीं थी कि भगवान राम जी का कभी मंदिर बनेगा लेकिन हमारे पूर्वजों के बलिदान के सहयोग से जो है हम आज हम लोग का सौभाग्य है कि हम लोग दर्शन कर पा रहे हैं उनकी ही पुण्य प्रताप की देन है कि जो है मंदिर बन गया हम लोग दर्शन बहुत बढ़िया तरीके से के और जनता भी कर रही है Meanwhile celebrating the consecration ceremony held in India's Ayodhya devotees in Nepal's Janakpur also lit 250000 oil fed lamps the ancient city, which is believed to be the maternal home of Goddess Sita, wife of Lord Ram, was adorned with decorations reading Jai Siya Ram, which the locals said in the celebration of the homecoming of their son-in-law. Moving on, prominent Kashmiri activist Amjad Ayub Mirza has said that if the demands of the people of POK and Gilgit Baltistan to remove unfair taxes and price hikes are not met by 5th of February, then they will have no choice but to form a government of POK in exile. A report. Renowned Kashmiri activist Amjad Ayub Mirza has said that if the demands of the people of Pakistan-occupied Kashmir and Gilgit-Baltistan are not met by 5th of February, then they will have no choice but to form a government of POK in exile. There has been unrest in the occupied territories over unfair taxes, price hike of electricity, wheat and other essentials since the past one year now. 
but Islamabad has refused to address these issues. Traders and the Awami Action Committee has announced they will hold massive protests on 5th of February to press their demands when Pakistan celebrates its so-called Kashmir Solidarity Day. Mirza said Pakistan should better withdraw its troops from the region now and allow legislative assemblies of the occupied territories to become fully sovereign. Pakistani occupied Jammu Kashmir has been a colony of Pakistan for the past 76 years, but we are not going to remain silent and we declare that if by the 5th of February our demands, the demands of the people are not met, then they will leave us with no choice but to form a government in exile of POJK and Gilgit Baltistan. Mirza added that people in the region are fed up with Pakistan's occupation and they will no longer bear this exploitation and atrocities. I repeat, there will be no negotiations with Pakistan on this matter. 5th of February is the, our deadline. It's the deadline of a nation, of a nation that has come out in protest and has said that no more, we are going to take no more insult, no more exploitation and no more atrocities are going to be allowed upon our people. Residents of POK and Gilgit Baltistan blame that Pakistan does not grant them any political rights and representation, although it taxes them heavily. A Taliban official on Monday informed that four survivors of a fatal plane crash in northern Afghanistan are in good health and bodies of two passengers are being repatriated to Kabul. The charter plane destined for Moscow with six people aboard had gone off the radar on Saturday after which it was reported that it crashed in the mountains in northern Afghanistan. The flight had been carrying out a private medical evacuation from Thailand. Efforts to understand the circumstances leading to the crash continue. Sri Lanka's central bank kept interest rates steady on Tuesday in line with market expectations for going a rate cut as a new tax threatened upward pressure on expenses and fueled concerns about inflation. This comes days after an IMF delegation wrapping up a technical staff visit. At the start of 2024, the island nation raised its value-added tax to 18% to meet revenue targets under the $2.9 billion IMF program. That could spark a renewed rise in Sri Lanka's key inflation rate, which had eased to 4% at the end of 2023 from a high of 70% in 2022. The island nation will now need to secure agreements with creditors in the next few months to get past the second review of the IMF program due in the first half of 2024. The country's total external debt is $36.4 billion, according to latest data. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.